Hey everyone, in this video we are going to go through program planning and how that looks for a community health nurse. Welcome to CASRN, where I teach you about all things nursing. In this video we're going to do an introduction to program planning and talk about the steps of the planning process. First off, program planning is a process that includes identifying a community problem, developing a program to address that problem, and evaluation of that program for success or failure. So if you're looking through this, you might see some words that look familiar to the nursing process. So we've got identifying, which is diagnosing a problem. We're going to address that problem in that we're going to treat it or do an intervention. And then we need to evaluate that program to make sure that it's successful. We have to first assess our community so that we can identify the needs. After that, we're going to set up some goals and objectives. We're going to develop an intervention and we want to make sure we do something called evidence based planning or evidence based programs. Then we're going to implement the intervention or the program. And then of course we need to evaluate it. So I know that this is more steps to remember and there's so many steps to remember in nursing school, but go back to the beginning of nursing school when you were learning about the nursing process. And I'm going to take these and group them into the nursing process for you just to make it a little bit easier. So assessment, right? We, instead of assessing just a single patient, we're going to assess an entire community. Then we're going to diagnose the needs of that community. So we're going to identify what they are and then give them a diagnosis, right? So we, when we see the symptoms or we see what's going on as a nurse, then we always do a diagnose. At that point, we can come up with our planning. So this is when we're going to set care plans for our patients. And then we're going to implement that plan that we've put into place. And then of course we need to evaluate our treatment to see if it was actually successful. Now in the community assessment, we're going to assess the entire community as I previously stated. So this is what we would call the target population. And I do believe that they have changed the vernacular on that, but when I was in school, we called it the target population. This essentially is the group of individuals for which our intervention is intended. And this is also equivalent to just the nursing process of an assessment. So again, rather than assessing a patient, you're assessing the needs of an entire community or target population. So this can be a geographic location, just a region, a state, a city, or a neighborhood. It could be based on gender, it could be based on race and ethnicity, or it could be based on a health problem or challenge or any other topic that you're seeing that there is a need inside your community. This is where you might do a windshield survey. This also may be someone that did some research that came across your desk and you want to study it more. This could also include assessing the community through various means, such as doing your own surveys and focus groups. So I do have a more in-depth video about community assessment, and I recommend watching it to give you more information on how to do a community assessment. Next off, we want to identify needs. So again, this is equivalent in the nursing process to diagnosing. So to identify those needs, you need to gather data. So this might be from the community or from online resources that you are collecting data that's pertinent to your intervention or uh, through your community assessment you've seen coming up and you want to study it out a little bit further. So the government and local health departments will collect a lot of census and health related data that you can access. For example, when I worked in community health and we needed data on teen pregnancy in our area, we used our local health department who had data related to the age of the mothers. And then we also used a CDC website called the YRBSS which is also called the Youth Risk Behavior Surveillance System. And I've linked that in the video description so you can check it out if you want to. You also may gather more data through some focus groups and written surveys. And then you also are going to want to identify barriers along with those needs. And it might, sometimes it's a simple fix. Your inter intervention needs to be something fairly simple and sometimes it needs to be bigger to help people reach those needs. So. Make sure you're checking to see the barriers as well as the needs. Now keep in mind as you are gathering this data that it may not be the original problem that you thought and that you may need to shift your focus. After we've identified our needs, 
we want to set goals. This is equivalent in the nursing process as planning. After you've completed your assessment and identified the needs of the community, it's very important to set goals and objectives to achieve your desired outcome. Now our outcome in this scenario, let's say we want to reduce the amount of negative health outcomes from cigarette smoking. So this is our huge outcome that we're hoping happens from our intervention. But in order to do that, this is really broad and there's no measurable way to show what we're trying to do. So we need to set goals and objectives. Now goals are gonna be a bigger umbrella term, but smaller than the actual outcome. So right here as an example, one of the goals that we would have is to reduce the number of adults that smoke in the community by 5%. And then we would have multiple objectives that would help us reach that goal. So an example would be holding a smoking cessation class. Another one might be advertise in five locations where you know that people gather that are more susceptible to smoking. You could also have an objective to run a radio ad. And then another one could be to enroll 20 adults in each smoking cessation class that you're holding. So whatever your goals and objectives are, you do need to make sure that there's something called SMART goals, which means that they are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So these goals and objectives that I've written down here, they're examples and they're not written down as they need to be for a SMART goal. When you try to find funding for your program planning, you have to write it down in a smart manner. Otherwise, the people who look at your funding request, which would be a grant, they're going to look at this and say, hey, this isn't specific enough. So for example, on the goal here, you would want to say that you want to reduce the number of adults that smoke in the community by 5%. And then you would put a date. And then on the objectives, you would also want to put dates or the date by which you're going to have met that objective. And that tells people that you've got a really solid plan into place on how to do those things. Then after we've come up with our goals and our interventions and what we're wanting to do, part of that that goes along with this is also developing an intervention. So this is, again, part of your planning process. So you're going to want to find an already existing plan that will meet your needs. It's a lot easier than trying to come up with your own evidence-based program. There are many places that you can look for those evidence-based programs. The CDC has a list of them. And then, and these are programs that have gone through a very rigorous implementation and evaluation process to prove their effectiveness. These programs are typically come with a manual and training to ensure fidelity of the program. And then implementing, of course, in the nursing process is the implementation. So this is where you're actually going to start your intervention or your program, like holding a smoking cessation class or whatever program it is that you're going to do, uh, making sure to do so to fidelity. And that means that you do it exactly as it's written in the manual and exactly as you are trained to do it, because that's evidence based. The program has been tested based on what's written in the manual and how it's intended to be implemented. If you cherry pick pieces from the program, you're not doing it to fidelity and it can mean that the program fails. And then of course, we always, always, always want to evaluate just as we would do when giving a medication to a patient. We evaluate our implementation, our program, did it work? So evaluating the effectiveness of a community-based program is going to include follow-up surveys and you can do those immediately. So continuing with our example of the class, we would maybe do it immediately following the class. We would do maybe a six month follow-up and a 12 month follow-up. And then the follow-up data that we're going to get from government websites like the health department or the CDC, this is something that's going to change over years. When we're talking about the negative effects that come from smoking tobacco or from vaping, those are long-term effects. Those are effects that take 20, 30, 40 years. And so we're not necessarily going to see a lot of the data change on that long-term evaluation. However, we can do these pre and post surveys to help us understand what our our community knew before, what they knew after, and then we would want to follow up with them to see if they, at six months, if they're still tobacco free and at 12 months, if they're still tobacco free. 
quick review, program planning includes a community assessment, identifying needs and barriers, goals and objectives, developing an intervention, implementing that intervention, and then evaluating the inter intervention for success. We always want to make sure that we're using evidence-based practice and programs and that we're setting SMART goals. Thanks for tuning in. Please help me grow my channel by clicking subscribe and follow below. 